Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Vlogger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we take up part 1 on the Personal Property Security Act, otherwise known as Republic Act Number no. 11057. Now if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Okay? Now the Personal Property Security Act or PPSA to make it short was signed into law on August 17, 2018. It, uh, it took effect on September 7, 2018 and the implementing rules and regulations of this law was passed on October 10, 2019. Now, we just have to wait for uh, the Land Registration Authority to create the register of uh, PPSA no? in order for us to know that the law is being implemented already. Okay? Now, uh, the PPSA seeks to establish a unified and modern legal framework for securing obligations using personal property. How? By providing for rules on creation, perfection, determination of priority, and enforcement of what is now known as a security interest. Okay? This is in line with the policy of the state of promoting economic activity by increasing access to least cost credit or credit that you can acquire at the least possible cost. Okay? And this is particularly geared toward micro, small, medium enterprises, no? MSMEs. Okay? Before, security transactions over personal properties which secure the performance of uh, principal obligations were governed by the law on pledge and uh, chattel mortgage. Okay? And uh, the laws over these are the civil code and uh, Act 1508 for chattel mortgage and other related laws. Okay? However, these laws have been repealed expressly. Okay? There is an express repeal of pledge and chattel mortgage by virtue of section 66 of the PPSA okay the PPSA now provides for a single type of security transaction there is no more distinction between pledge and mortgage okay there is a single type of security transaction which is the security interest okay now uh, between the, the, the creation of the law and its actual implementation if it's not yet been being in implemented, then the provisions of the law on pledge and chattel mortgage will still govern, okay? Until it, its implementation, okay? But since the IRRs have already been passed, we just have to wait for the LRA to implement the law and uh, until such implementation, we will still follow the rules on pledge and chattel mortgage, okay? Now, the PPSA covers all transactions of any form that secure obligations with personal property. And the personal properties that may be used uh, in co can cover any kind of personal property, okay? Any kind, including uh, tangible or even incorporeal rights. It includes negotiable instruments or negotiable documents of title, deposit accounts, intellectual property, equipments, even livestock, Okay, so uh, there are there's a list in the law and the implementing rules, no, which is not exclusive. However, what is clear is that the following two items are not included in the classification of personal property, and namely these are aircrafts. Okay, aircrafts cannot be the subject of the PPSA eh? because it is governed by the Civil Aviation Authority Act, or ships. Barco, okay? Because ships are covered by the ship mortgage decree. So, aircrafts and ships cannot be used as personal property to secure the performance of a principal obligation under the PPSA. You resort to their respective laws. Now, I mentioned that uh, PPSA now, now involves only a single type of transaction, the security interest. And what is the security interest? Okay, it is a property right in collateral that secures the payment or other performance of an obligation. 
regardless of the name given to the contract by the parties or the type of the asset or the status of the grantor and who is the grantor he is the one who offers or uh, grants the security interest to secure his or someone else's obligation okay or he can be a buyer or transferee of collateral no who acquires the right to the collateral subject to the security interest he can also be the transferor in an outside outright transfer of uh, accounts receivable and he can also be a lessee of goods so uh, again regardless of the status of the grantor or regardless of the status of the secured creditor this is also regardless of the nature of the secured obligations and it also includes the security interest includes the right of a buyer's buyer of accounts receivable or a lessor under an operating lease for not less than one year okay now this security interest extends to the identifiable and traceable proceeds of the personal property in case the personal property produces proceeds like uh, funds or money negotiable documents etc okay and this uh, security interest will continue in the collateral even if such collateral or personal property is sold leased licensed exchanged or otherwise disposed of so even if the uh, grantor no sells that property the the uh, security interest will follow that prop property after its transfer to the, so any subsequent transfery okay now it will continue as i said no unless no there is an exception unless there is a stipulation to the contrary or in case the subsequent transferee is a buyer in good faith meaning he has no knowledge of any defect in the title okay however of course he will not be a buyer in good faith if the security interest is registered before uh, the transferee acquired it because of course registration is noticed to the whole world and binds third parties okay in case of a security interest in accounts receivable which arise from either a contract of supply of lease of supply or lease of goods or services or uh, in case of which are not financial services by the way huh? or uh, in case of a construction contract or in case of accounts receivable from a contract of sale or lease of real property or sale lease or license of intellectual property the security interest will still be valid even if there is a contractual limitation put up Upon that no even if there is a contractual limitation on the grantor's right to create a security interest okay meaning that if the parties to the account receivables in the cases I mentioned tried to put a limitation that hey grantor you cannot uh, make this into a security interest no or there is a limit upon your right to make a security interest no the law expressly st states that any stipulation limiting the grantor's right to create a security interest is void okay in other words, the security interest on that uh, account receivable in the cases I mentioned will continue to be valid and the stipulation limiting liability, uh, stipulation limiting uh, the right of the grantor to create a uh, security interest shall be void. Okay? Now, the how is a security interest created? We're going into the creation of a security interest now okay uh, security interest is created through a security agreement now this security agreement must be in writing okay it must be in a written contract which is signed by the parties however the law allows the security agreement to be contained in uh, one or more writings no it can be in one or more writings provided that when you take the writings together you can establish or show the intention of the parties to create a security interest okay now the security agreement must also have a description of the collateral okay and uh, the, this description will be sufficient if it can reasonably identify the 
su the subject no or the collateral itself okay now this description can be specific but it can also be general the law even gives examples no it can be all equipment or uh, all goods no so as long as you can reasonably identify that those are the uh, the property referred to okay now the security agreement can also cover future property okay future property but this is subject to uh, a qualification under the law that the security interest will only be created huh? it will only start to exist when the grantor acquires the rights over that future property or when he gains the power to encumber it okay and before that there uh, there is nothing to uh, use as security okay now the security agreement may provide that the security interest in tangible assets okay tangible things that you can touch no extends to its product in case of transformation or to its replacement in case it is replaced however in case of transformation into product or replacement the security interest will be only limited to the value of the asset before its transformation or replacement in case of commingling of goods whether tangible or intangible the security interest will extend to the mass okay take note it extends to the mass but it will be limited to the proportion which uh, the encumbered part of the mass bears to the entire mass okay so uh, it's similar to the rule on sales no the owner becomes the owner of uh, the, the buyer becomes the owner of the mass and he only owns a proportionate share okay that's similar no so here uh, the the security interest will only be limited to the proportion which the encumbered mass bears to the whole okay now there are uh, other rules there please just check it but uh, it's it's not really that uh, important no so now let's go on to perfection of the security interest okay now when uh, security interest uh, is perfected no it becomes effective against third parties okay but in case the security uh, agreement no is not uh, registered it will not bind third parties of course but nevertheless it will be binding and valid between the parties okay just remember your principles in Oblicon on uh, registration, no? When it is it binding on third parties, when is it binding only between uh, the parties, okay? So, uh, how is uh, security agreement uh, and security interest perfected, no? It's perfected through first, no? There must be creation, okay? It must be created through a security agreement, a secure the security interest must be created first through a security agreement and it will now be perfected if you add either registration of a notice with the registry of property in the land registration authority or LRA for short huh? or possession of uh, the property okay if the by the secured creditor if the secured creditor is given possession of the the property no subject of the secured interest no but those two will apply in case of tangible assets or properties okay so again in case of tangible properties the security interest is perfected upon its creation through a security agreement and either either its registration or possession by the secured creditor okay what about if it's intangible no if it's either an investment property which means any property right arising from investment which includes securities or commodity uh, contracts no or a deposit account no this is included in intangible uh, uh, assets no in case of an investment property or deposit account then uh, the security interest is perfected either through registration of the notice with the registry of the LRA or through the completion of a control agreement and this control agreement is simple enough to understand no it's a uh, this control agreement is a written agreement which must be under oath okay in order to determine the time of its perfection okay it must be under oath with a date and uh, time no 
in order to uh, determine the time of its perfection. And it's a written agreement among the grantor, the secured creditor, and either the intermediary or the deposit-taking uh, institute, meaning the bank no, or any other deposit-taking institute, where the intermedia intermediary or the deposit-taking institute agrees to follow the instructions of the secured creditor without the consent of the grantor without the consent huh? meaning that if it's money the deposit taking institute will uh, uh, follow the instructions of the secured creditor when it comes to payment or if it's a commodity contract uh, the intermediary will follow the instructions of the secured creditor when it comes to the payment of the value of the contract etc okay now uh, I mentioned registration earlier, no? And uh, under this PPSA, the LRA, no, is uh, mandated to establish and administer an electronic central registry, okay? And uh, this electronic central registry will be where notice of notice of and liens in personal property may be registered and searched for, okay? So uh, this is a uh, this register allows the public to access the information contained here. You can search for it online, okay? Why? Because under the same law, no PPSA, the information contained in the registry, no register notice, is uh, is considered a public record, okay? Of course, this is uh, in order to bind third parties. So, uh, this is consistent with its being a public record, okay? Now, the notice, no, which is uh, registered, can cover multiple security agreements, okay? And it, it will be effective from the time that it can be discovered or is discoverable on the records of the registry. And uh, the effectivity of the notice will last until the time that is indicated no, in the notice. Unless, unless there is a continuation notice which is registered within 6 months okay, before the expiration of the period indicated in the notice. Okay? Now, the notice must include or contain the identification number of the grantor otherwise it will be considered what the law calls as a seriously misleading seriously misleading notice okay and uh, if it is a seriously misleading notice then it will be considered ineffective okay now uh, the other uh, matters which may be contained in the notice are the identification of the secured creditor or his agent the description of the collateral of course the uh, address, the addresses, the duration of the effectivity, and the uh, payment of any fees, okay, which uh, are involved in the notice, okay. Now, this notice, no, may be amended, okay, uh, such as in the case where the secured creditor assigns his right to a perfected security interest, or when uh, collateral is added, or a grantor is added, or in case of continuation, as I mentioned earlier, no, or continuation simply means extension, no, okay, continuation, or even uh, in case of partial release by the secured creditor, meaning partial condonation, or in case uh, the description of the collateral includes a property which is not in, which is not supposed to be included, no, so in those cases, the the grantor may apply for an amendment of the notice, okay. Now, a security interest is extinguished when all the secured obligations are discharged, okay? And no outstanding uh, commitments to extend credit are uh, to extend credit secured by the security interest, in which case the, uh, the grantor may demand termination of the notice, okay? So, uh, of course, no, the security interest will necessarily be extinguished when when there has been full performance okay if there has been full performance and there is no more uh, obligation to give credit as secured by the security interest then there's nothing no the, the security and interest serves no purpose anymore 
Okay? So, in this case, it will be discharged or extinguished. And the grantor may apply now for termination. Another case where the grantor may apply for termination is if uh, in case no security agreement exists at all. Okay? So, uh, whether the grantor is applying for amendment of the notice or of uh, termination of the notice, he was simply give a demand to the secured uh, creditor and the secured creditor has 15 days okay 15 days upon receipt of the demand within which he will register the amendment or termination of the notice as may be applicable now in case the secured creditor fails to uh, register the amended notice or termination notice then the remedy of the grantor here is to uh, go to court and ask the court to issue an order either amending or terminating the notice as the case may be. So that's it for the rules on registration of notice, no perfection through registration of notice and the rules on notice as well. No? And uh, when it comes to perfection of the security interest through possession, it's easy enough to understand. No? Uh, it's perfected through creation of the security interest by uh, security agreement and when the secured creditor has possession over the personal property. Okay. Now, uh, what we have to talk about now is perfection by virtue of control. In other words, a security interest is uh, in uh, deposit accounts or investment properties is perfected by control in the following manner. Okay, first, no, a creation of the security interest in favor of the deposit taking institution or the intermediary. Okay, it's created in favor of the bank or the intermediary. No, second. It can also be created through the conclusion of a control agreement no? if the parties enter into a control agreement. And finally, in case of investment properties that are uh, electronic securities no? which are not held by an intermediary, then simply by the notation of the security interest in the books for the purpose of recording the name of the holder of the securities. So can you just uh, log it in the books of record? Okay? Now, uh, nothing in the PPSA can be used by the grantor to compel the deposit-taking institute or the intermediary to enter into a control agreement. In other words, the grantor cannot say, hey, under the PPSA, you are bound to enter into a control agreement with me. No, that cannot be allowed. Okay, And the deposit-taking institute or the intermediary is not compelled to confirm the existence of a control agreement okay except at the request of the grantor no this is in line with uh, the laws on secrecy of bank deposits etc etc no okay so the deposit taking institute or the intermediary cannot be compelled to confirm the existence of the control agreement except again at the request of the grantor okay now if the so that's it now for the perfection by uh, the three ways, no? registration, possession, or control. Okay, just remember when it's a tangible property, it's perf the security interest is perfected either by registration or possession. And in case of intangibles, either through registration or by control. Okay, now uh, some additional rules. No, if the collateral, no. Uh, produces uh, money, um, accounts receivable, or negotiable instruments, deposit accounts, no? Upon disposition of the collateral, okay, the security interest will now extend to such money, accounts receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts, okay? It extends without need of a further agreement. In other words, the security interest is continuously perfected. Okay, but that is only in the case, again, of money, accounts receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts. If the proceeds are different from money, no, etc., then the security interest can only be perfected by uh, applying the, uh, by the means no, which are applicable to the particular type. Meaning, there has to be a new registration or new possession or new control, no? 
Okay? So, it has to be perfected again if the proceeds are different. Okay? And the collateral itself has been disposed of. Okay? But if it's money or other those other intangibles which I, which I mentioned, then it is continuously perfected without need of a further agreement. Okay? Now, if those uh, assets or those proceeds rather, no, which are not money, accounts receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts, if those are not perfected anew by the means applicable to each type, no, within 15 days from the receipt of the grantor of uh, the proceeds, no, then they will not be effective against third persons. Okay? The security interest will not be effective against third persons. Again, it has to be perfected anew if it's not money, accounts receivable, negotiable instruments, or deposit accounts. Okay? Now, in case the security interest is over a fixture, no, which has now become part of another movable or or an immovable or uh, has been commingled, no, the security interest in such fixture continues, no, continues to exist, provided that the personal property is still traceable, meaning you can still find out where it is or what it is, okay. And uh, the final rule that you should you should remember, no, is that any subsequent change in the means of perfection, like from registration, it now becomes possession. Okay, any subsequent change of uh, the means of perfection does not affect the previous perfection. In other words, if it was perfected before, then that perfection continues even if you change the mode of perfection. Okay, but uh, the requirement there is that it has to have been perfected at the start and there is no intervening time between the time of perfection and the subsequent change in the mode. There is no intervening time in which the perfection does not exist. Okay? So, uh, to make it simple, no? if it's been perfected, it has to be perfected all throughout even if there is a subsequent change in perfection. Okay? So, that's it for uh, part 1 on the Personal Property Security Act. No, We talked about the preliminary matters, the creation of security interest, and perfection of security interest. Okay? Just remember that. no Creation is through a security agreement. Perfection through the three modes. no Either registration or possession for tangibles or registration and or uh, registration or control in case of intangibles. Okay? So, uh, I hope you may have picked up a thing or two and I hope to see you in part two. Okay? See you soon. Bye!